see you all here today. This is a very special occasion for us. I have to say that going back about three months to the middle of January when there was about 18 inches of snow here, we had an old bridge that didn't want to come down and I have to say that I think many of us wondered whether we would actually be running trains at all, certainly this Easter. So this is a magnificent achievement. Trust us to choose the worst weather for 30 years to do this particular bridge renewal, but it was done and the fact that it was completed is a tribute to a huge number of people, both to our own volunteers and to our own staff, but also to the contractors, especially I think Construction Marine, but also the people who built there, who designed the bridge and built it, Navy Bridge down in Chepstow, Cass Haywood who designed it, uh, and of course we also had tremendous help from other people in the railway industry, Volker Rail who lent us their crane so that we could actually get the old bridge out, it did actually take some coming down. It wasn't giving up easily after 145 years, but it did, uh, it did get removed eventually, and they also put in place the new, the new greens as well. We also had help from uh, D.B. Schenker, who are the freight company, the main freight company running freight trains in Britain these days. Uh, they brought the green in for us, and many other people as well. So here we are today. The bridge is finished, and congratulations to everybody. But I also want to thank those who've contributed financially, because without their help, we certainly could not have actually done the work at all. Uh, we're very grateful to, I suppose you have to say, first of all, so many members of the public who've given money during last year, and to our own members who've not only given money, but have also gone down trains with buckets, held other events in order to make sure that the money came in. But on top of that, we were very grateful to the North Yorkshire County Council, who gave us a grant of £300,000 not a small sum to any local authority, but I think it recognised how important this railway is to the local community and to the economy of this region. We've also had £90,000 from LEADER. Now, LEADER is a project that looks at rural regeneration, and again, we're tremendously grateful to have received that grant. So between them, they've given us nearly £400,000. That's on top of the money that's come from members of the public. I think we are very grateful indeed. Without all that support, then the bridge could never have been rebuilt, and to be honest, we would be struggling to run trains at all this year. So thank you all, one, one and all, for all your contributions. This is the time when we come to actually see the bridge uh, officially open. And I'm going to hand over to Murray Brown, who will introduce our patron, uh, Pete Walkerman. Um, we've actually got a million and a quarter pounds investment here, as my top colleague has just told me. We've got the bridge itself and half a million pounds just over for the locomotive. And you are one of the first members of the public to travel behind the locomotive. Um, Pete Waterman, bless him, has been very kindly associated with this railway for some time. Um, we've now become a tradition for Pete to unveil or launch into service our restored LNER coaches. And Pete is quite a courage enthusiast, for those of you who don't know. Uh, his willingness to become patron of this appeal has certainly given us a huge impetus. And uh, I must say thanks on behalf of all the railway to Pete. Would you care to step forward, please? Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I first came here when you could only come this far. And I came with the GEC, Photographic Society, two weeks after you opened. Little did I ever think that all these years later I'd come and unveil a bridge. So, and this is unique for me now. I think I've opened more bridges, more level crossings, more railway stations than Her Majesty the Queen. <laughs> so without ado, there you go.
Uh, but I reckon that actually in the 21st century, they were looking back and saying, hey, they don't build bridge, bridges these days like they did in the 21st century. <laughs> so we hope that in 145 years, this bridge will still be standing. There's always been a, a bit of a connection between railways and the church. No coincidence that this new engine, newly overhauled, is called Eric Tracy. Eric Tracy, as many of you will know, was uh, the Bishop of Wakefield and was famous both as a railway photographer as well as in ecclesiastical terms. So we felt it was very appropriate to have the Bishop of Whitley here today, perhaps to give a blessing on this bridge and all those who will travel over it <coughs> over, we hope, the next 145 years. Thank you. The Latin word for a bishop is pontifex, which means a bridge builder. So uh, I rather feel that uh, it ought to be something that's uh, in my kind of sphere of, uh, of influence. Uh, but it's a great privilege to be here, uh, and uh, as you quite rightly say, clergy and trains somehow seem to go together. But uh, uh, let us pray. Almighty God, we ask you to bless this bridge, and all who travel across it, and all who come to this beautiful part of your creation to enjoy the glories that are part of Yorkshire. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Perhaps you're going to have a word with him and we'll all come back in a little bit. Thank you. Sorry! If I can add some weight to it, then, you know, that's I was in. You're talking about about three quarters of a million pound investment here in this thing. What does that indicate about the heritage railway world today? Well, what it indicates is that railways have, you know, preserved railways have changed. From when we, as a bunch of enthusiasts, brought second hand locos off the R and thought we could run a service, we're now looking at serious parts of our rural heritage. Um, and I think this here um, is interesting because I think now we will see people take us more serious. If you look at how many visitors come to North York Moors, you look at its turnover, its impact on the local economy, you can then multiply that by a hundred railways and you start to see actually with a fabulous movement, with a fabulous industry at the back of it. So for the first time, you know, we, we look at these big programs of, of replacing bridges, relaying sections you know, that we just couldn't afford to do. Maybe the next government or whichever government is it, got to start taking us a bit more serious. We're no longer enthusiasts in a field repair and steam engines. We are now part of the rural economy. Okay, Pete, just one from me, but can you look at him as, as, yeah. in the same way? Bro? Just give us your impressions and your thoughts about the bridge and now you've seen it. Oh, I think it's fantastic. You know, I think that, uh, you know, it's sorry to lose some 145 years old, but we've got to keep the railway running. It's been kept in situ and when it weathers down a bit, you won't ever notice it wasn't here. Are you impressed with how they managed to do this? Well, the worst winter for 30 years and they've, they've opened on time, I think it's staggering. I mean, it, it, it shows how dedicated uh, enthusiasts can be. Oh, God, that bleak. Yeah. Couldn't wait to get to Whitby yeah, to get the fish Bruce. and chips. Yeah. You know, starving by the time we got there. No, it wasn't snowing, it was, it was, but it was cold. Oh. Wet and cold. So did you take any other Whitby highlight? No, no, we, we, went, we, we came by train and then you can still do it by train. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, Went back then, but I've been coming back ever since. And, uh, you know, I, I love it up here. So do you come to stay then? Or you just no, no, I come up for the day, which is, which you know, it's getting a bit with the traffic, particularly now around Leeds, it becomes difficult. Yeah. But I leave home about half past four, quarter to five, yeah. and I get here for sort of half past six, quarter to seven, wipe the engines up and spend here and then. Have a pint and then go back about nine o'clock. It's quieting down by then. So you're a bit like boys with the spies then when you get here. Yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, it's. Uh, I mean, I don't have to play on the engine, so I, I, you know, I'm quite happy just, just walking around talking to people. Yeah. Um, 
How did you get involved with this sort of bridge campaign? Did you put yourself forward? You no, no, I was asked, but I mean, I think this is the first, you know, the whole movement is now going to start facing lots of these problems. Yeah. Not just, uh, you know, the, I think what the North York Mall has done, it's, it's faced a problem immediately. Yeah. Where some people are sticking their heads in the sand. I mean, you know, a lot of this steel is, is life expired. Yeah. I mean, even on our steam, even on the engines, we're finding the, the boilers and that and the steel actually is life expired. So, you know, to keep all this going, it's becoming more and more expensive. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the bad news. The good news is it's employing lots of people now because all these, all these schemes are labour intensive and you can't you can't take them to China or India. No. They've got to be done by local people. So it's mean that we're we're actually now starting apprenticeships yeah. to create industries to keep these um is it where everybody forgets about these. Thirteen hundred full time jobs throughout the country. Yeah, well everybody forgets, you know, there are there are actually twelve thousand people employed in this industry. Yeah. There's, it's a hundred and twenty-five million pounds it brings into the economy, which equates to about one point three billion into you know into the, now the great the other thing to remember is this is all in rural economies. You know, Valley is in East Lanks, all these are in, these are not in city centres. So actually they become really crucial for the local environment, particularly rural. If you look at what happened to the Seven Valley when the the floods washed away the, 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 the track. I mean, the whole valley went into, into absolute serious problem economically. Because people forget that it's not just the railway, the, it's the shops in the valley, the, the pubs, and all, all the taxi drivers, and everybody. The whole knock on effect, once you've established one of these, is quite phenomenal. Have I put some money? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the engine up the front is 700,000 a more money. Yeah? Yeah. It's not a toy for me, it's a business for me. I mean, I have a charity that, you know, we are now Britain's, probably Europe, the biggest boiler makers. And, um, you know, you can't take it with you unless the, the bishop's got the plan for me. So you're telling me I'm being left to Whitby since 1973. No, I've been to Whitby since then. Uh, I went to Whitby last year when we came up because it was a stunning day and we went to Whitby to, to, to sit on the, on the prom there. You know. It was just such beautiful weather. So what's your favourite hot spots in Whitby then? Have you been to our famous magpie cafe? No. Oh, I have, yes I have, yes. Yeah, yes I have actually. Yeah. Have you been up the Abbey Steps? Yes, I've done the Abbey Steps. Well, I did, um, I did Songs of Praise oh, right. from the Abbey, so... When yeah, was that? Oh, like it, five years ago then. Yeah. Well, I did, used to do three specials a year for them. Until they... Until, until I told them that I didn't, didn't want to sing any modern hymns, so, uh, you know. <laughs> You know, I'm, you know, I'm not a happy clappy uh, Christian. I'm a, I'm a fire and brimstone Christian. Me, I like, I like to think that you know I'm going to be hell if I, you know, damned if I get things wrong. Into politics, then. I have to be careful because we're in Perth. I can't speak politics because you know I, I seriously can't because the schemes that I run are for the government and we're not allowed under the rules of government by those elections to talk politics. Um, but I'm heavily involved with politics and young people, so let's put it that way. Yes, yeah, I mean, you know, I've got uh, currently 37, I'll be 67 next year with a thousand a year after. Um, fortunately, that's all we can say about them because if we, t we, we started to go on about them, you know, there, there will be complaints. This is in your charity, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Right, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.
Yeah. Does that make it that way? Yeah. You know, that's good. Thank you, thank you. Oh, right. Stephen, cheers. Oh,